Hello, today is a great pleasure for me because I am with a friend. I'm going to let him introduce himself to you. How are you today, my friend? Good, good. Thanks for having me. So yeah, my name is Dane. Um, I have a podcast called English with Dane, which is the, the main thing I do. It's a podcast, obviously, for English learning, but it's oriented specifically towards Spanish speakers. It's not just for Spanish speakers, but I do translate things to Spanish. So I think it's helpful and it's kind of a way to practice and learn vocabulary, verbs, everything in a really stress-free environment. Very nice. For starters, where are you in the world right now? I live in Madrid, Spain. Beautiful, beautiful Madrid. Nice. Are you there for work? Um, I moved here actually when I was 13 years old mm -hmm. and I'm currently 33. So I've lived wow. here for 20 years. Um, I moved here and I went to high school here. I went to university here. I've mm -hmm. been working here. Mm -hmm. So even though I am from Peru, from Lima, um, mm -hmm. I feel like I'm almost really just from Madrid. Your English is amazing. How did you pick it up? Um, so because of my dad's job, we moved around quite a bit. And one of those destinations was the United States. Mm -hmm. So when I was around five years old, we moved to Maryland on the East Coast. Mm -hmm. And man, I was just like, I was thrown into a, a public school as, and mm -hmm. as a five-year-old in, in a new environment with a new language, you mm -hmm. just pick it up, you know, like... Mm -hmm. It's not really up to you. You're just a sponge at that mm -hmm. age. Yeah. So I was I was fortunate to have that experience. And because at home we've always spoken Spanish, but I studied in English and lived in an English um, speaking context. I'm mm -hmm. just like, I swear it's like my, my brain is just like split down the middle, mm -hmm. English and Spanish. And I don't really know which one, um, which I consider my native language. It's a, a little bit of a of a mess in that regard, but it's been mm -hmm. it's been really useful, I think. And um, I know your question was just where'd you pick it up, but it's just I have so much to say about it. <laughs> no, go ahead. Um, it's just it's just been so. I don't want to say easy, but it's it's kind of like an obvious. Um, for me, it was very obvious that I wanted to do. Um, create this podcast mm -hmm. for Spanish speakers, because I want people to have that experience that I had. And I think it's really difficult unless um, you have the means to maybe travel abroad and spend mm -hmm. a lot of time, you know, in different, in different countries, speaking to different people, absorbing different cultures, like learning vocabulary in a natural, like organic way. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, unless you have, um, the luck or, or, or unless you can, you can, you can live that life. I kind mm -hmm. of wanted people to learn how I learned, you know, yes. um, just because just through context, not necessarily learning the rules. Like I'm not in my, I'm not trying to teach you um, the rules and why you have to use the present perfect right now. I just want yeah. you to, to, to like feel it and to know when mm -hmm. to use it. And I want to make mm -hmm. English like a reflex. I wanted to, to help people just like learn like mm -hmm. the way I did. So, so yeah, I picked it up in the U S um, mm -hmm. I've always studied in English and, and yeah, that's where, that's where it is. Awesome. And when have you decided to be an English teacher? Um, I don't really know, man. <laughs> uh, originally I wanted to maybe write, I'm really interested in music as well and, and music production. I wanted to, to be a music producer and you too. I love oh, music. That's, awesome. yeah. that's, that's more, more to talk about. Um, mm -hmm. so I wanted to do things like that. And honestly, when I first started going to university, I mean, okay, no, if I back up a little bit, mm -hmm. I've always had a few teachers in my life that just like really impacted me, you know, through high school and stuff. And I, and I thought like, like super underrated, man. Teachers are, are, are very underrated, um, sometimes mm -hmm. underappreciated. But mm -hmm. once in a while, you get a teacher that really, that you really connect with or you, that you really see um, yeah. whose value you really see, you know? And I, and I, and I had um, a couple of teachers that made me feel like teaching was just really important. Yes. Um, it wasn't my first choice to, to teach. I wanted to do other stuff, but I kind of just fell into it. 
I fell mm-hmm. into it. Um, I started working for this company as, as a teacher because a friend of mine worked there and they, and I was at university and mm-hmm. she called me one day and said, Hey, we're, we're down a teacher. Like, mm-hmm. would you be able to come in yes. and, and cover, or maybe just, you know, take her, take mm-hmm. her position. And I was, mm-hmm. I was terrified, man. Be- also because it was teaching kids. It wasn't teaching adults. It was teaching mm-hmm. kids. Yes. And oftentimes that's more intimidating than teaching adults. You know, if they ask you to, Hey, here's a room full of 13 year olds. You're like, Oh man. Um, so I was terrified. I went in and mm-hmm. the first few lessons, maybe uh, first few lessons is, 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 is being nice to myself. Let's say okay. the first few weeks or months, um, mm-hmm. it, it mm-hmm. didn't go super well. You know, yeah. it didn't go super well. I was like mm-hmm. intimidated. I wanted them to think mm-hmm. I was cool. I wanted them to like me. Mm-hmm. And then I kind of realized like, it's very difficult to be a good teacher and also mm-hmm. really care about what the students think about you. And that's mm-hmm. maybe counterintuitive, but I, um, so I just started kind of mm-hmm. English was, wasn't on my mind. My, what, what was on my mind was being mm-hmm. a good teacher and like a good communicator Mm-hmm. you know and and then whatever the subject matter is um whatever the subject matter is is almost mm. irrelevant you know you you mm-hmm. need to have the respect of from your students you need to get that respect you need to be able to have open communication you need to be able to set boundaries mm-hmm. you need to be able to motivate in a way that's not your typical traditional you guys hey you can do it man i know you can do it mm-hmm. like yeah that works but m- i think motivation is isn't isn't it's, it's, it's something that it is maybe tricky to achieve, you know, and, and if you, Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't know how to explain it. Like I I really focus on creating an environment that was comfortable and that was accessible. Mm -hmm. And that we're just that my students felt comfortable because um, I think this is something that comes up a lot is as a teacher, when you're teaching, Mm -hmm. you see that like confidence is an issue. People don't want to speak because they'll make mistakes. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so I, I was, I wanted to create that environment. And so what drew me into teaching wasn't the mm-hmm. subject matter. It was actually yeah. just figuring out how I can create that environment. And also you, you figure out so many things about yourself when you start teaching. I, I, I like to say that you don't really know who you are until you've like taught mm-hmm. a class or if to, you led a team or, or these things. So I, I never really wanted to be a teacher and still, until I started teaching and I was like, mm-hmm. man, this is, this is cool. You know, the impact that you can have on, on people mm-hmm. and see how grateful they are. And, you know, the cliche, like it feels good yes. um, to teach, you know? Um, uh-huh. Yeah. That's, I just kind of fell into it and, and ran with it. I agree with you because I saw your content on TikTok mm-hmm. and I think you have teacher delivery, you're fun and you're very witty as well. Yeah. Um, I used to have a, a, a jujitsu coach that said, no, ten, no, ten dinero que pague eso. Yes. no, which is, yeah, like that's, yes. that's, 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 that's as far as my Portuguese goes, yes. but um, yes. like there's, you can't put a price on it. It roughly uh-huh. translated. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. And it happened to me as recently as like mm-hmm. three days ago, I, I teach mm-hmm. a few, a few private lessons, mm-hmm. not, not many. Mm-hmm. I, I teach a mm-hmm. few. Yeah. Um, and one of them is with like a 10 year old kid who was studying yeah. irregular verbs. Mm-hmm. He had an exam. And yes. his parents were like, Hey, he's having trouble with this. Can you mm-hmm. help him? He has an exam tomorrow. I was like, Oh, okay. Yes. I'll see what I can do. So we worked on it for, for the whole class. Mm-hmm. And at the end, he just said, Hey, at mm-hmm. the beginning, it, this was in Spanish, right? He goes at the beginning, I thought this was really difficult. And now mm-hmm. it just feels so easy. Yes. And I just thought like, and I, and I, I finished that class and I was mm-hmm. like, I, it felt like, like, like a high, it was like mm-hmm. a, a euphoric yeah. moment for me. I was just like, man, I just like, I, I just helped, I helped him not just maybe do well on the exam, but I just helped him learn a lesson in life. Yes. I'm not trying to be like, Oh, I helped him with a life lesson, mm-hmm. but it's true. Like something that can seem difficult. Mm-hmm. You just need to focus, maybe change the mm-hmm. approach because it wasn't just let's memorize the verbs. We yes. did it through quizzes, through games, through activities. Mm-hmm. And he just said like, he was like, wow, you, it, it feels easy now. And, and that mm-hmm. was like in, in one hour, um, and, and, and I just felt great for like the rest of the week, yes. you know, something like a, a small moment like that. Well, small, um, a quick moment like that, um, can really 
change not just for them but but for you and it, it is yeah. a kind of a cliche but i agree i agree do you have a memorable moment that you can forget while teaching yeah 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 um the first one was uh, when one of one of my bosses um mm -hmm. at, at the language school he he came up to me a while a while after i had started this was like mm -hmm. a few years later and he said hey like mm -hmm. Your kids are the only ones that leave the classroom and they're, mm. they're still like speaking English to each other outside of the classroom while their parents are picking mm -hmm. them up or something. Yeah. And, and I was like, what? Like, that's crazy. Mm -hmm. Like if, if you, if you're with your friends or with someone in a class and you leave, you just mm -hmm. go back to Spanish or Portuguese or whatever mm -hmm. your language yeah. is, you know? Um, and, and I remember thinking like, wow, that's great because that means that they're, they're feeling comfortable and mm -hmm. confident. Mm -hmm. And that's just a huge, a huge step. And again, not a huge like revelation of a moment. It wasn't like this yeah. big epitome. It wasn't, sorry, this big um, epiphany rather. Um, mm -hmm. But it just, it just felt, it just felt really good. And also having parents come to me and say, Hey, um, my son says he's not coming back unless he's in your class next mm -hmm. year. Or, yes. Hey, can my kid be in your class? I'm like, I don't, I'm sorry. Who's your kid is like, Oh no, I don't, you don't know him. Yes. He hasn't been here, but he only wants to be here if he's in your class because he's mm -hmm. heard from his friends that, uh -huh. and, and it's stuff like that, man. And, and with the podcast, um, mm -hmm. cause I consider that like, I don't teach that much anymore. I used to mm -hmm. be in like classrooms and stuff for yeah. years for like mm -hmm. nine, nine years, just in classrooms, mm -hmm. teaching all types of programs. Mm -hmm. And now I do most of my teaching through my podcast, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. And I have people that write to me from different mm -hmm. parts of the world saying incredible mm -hmm. things that I can't, I still can't like process saying things like, Hey, I, I got this job. Um, yeah. The interview was in English and I got it because of you. You made me feel confident. And I was like, man, mm -hmm. like that's crazy to me. Mm -hmm. That's, that's so crazy to me. And just get getting messages mm -hmm. from people saying, I love what you're doing. I listen to it every day in the car with my children, going to work, going awesome. to school. Mm -hmm. And, and it's still super crazy to me. Um, I've been doing this for like three years and it's still just, it, it gets me every time. Like there's no message that I get that's like that. And, and I go, ah, yeah, I know I've been doing this. Like every single time it hits yeah. me like the first, like the first time, you know? Um, so in terms of, in terms of memorable moments, I think it's just mm -hmm. a constant, yes. um, like barrage of small, mm -hmm. but yet really meaningful, um, interactions. Mm -hmm. what, what about you though? Cause I know you, uh, you teach a lot. Yeah, I do. I do it for 25 years. Wow. And I don't see me stopping anytime soon. If it wasn't for English, I wouldn't have a career today because I don't know what to do without English. I've learned a lot, mostly after the pandemic that we had to turn into hybrid teaching, distance learning and everything, because I have the physical school and I have the mm -hmm. online school as well. And as I told you before, I teach with my wife, but lately I've been teaching online and it's amazing as well because we have to learn how to deal with things. And I can confess that I think that my students have helped me to go through the pandemic because I see students every day and I speak much more English than Portuguese during the day because I teach from eight in the morning up to nine at night. So when I finish, then of course I talk to my wife, I talk to my children when I have breaks, but they are very short breaks, you know, and I have to come back to teaching. But I am crazy about English. I think if I wasn't crazy about the language, I wouldn't be able to teach this long in so much time as well during the day. I know what you mean. What, what, uh, let me ask you, like, what, what started you off um, when you were young? Was it, someone that spoke english did you like hear a song yeah. like what what like no. what what sparked the flame i saw madonna on tv i was seven years old you weren't born you are 10 years my junior my father was a bank cashier his whole life mm -hmm. and the next day he came for lunch and he told me hey i went to the english school here in town and i signed you up i said i'm going to have english classes after my first class, I fell in love with the language and I wow, never man. stopped. And it's that's, all because of crazy. Madonna. I think she's one of the greatest stars. She made me go to school to learn English. And then when I finished the complete course, I was 17. 
the principal came to me and said, you're not leaving the school. I said, what do you mean? She said, no, you're going to teach with me. I said, you're crazy. I can't teach. She said, you can. I said, no, I can't. Uh, she said, you can and you will. I said, okay, but you have to give me some guidance, some kind of orientation. And she told me, she's, she was very funny. I have an interview with her on the channel. She told me the orientation I'm going to give you, the guidance I'm going to give you is I'm going to put you inside the classroom with a bunch of students, kick your behind, close the door, leave you there. The only thing that I'm going to ask you is to be humble and be respectful and you're going to have an awesome career. So that's what I have today. That's For, crazy. There's been 34 years that I study English. I never stopped studying English. I always say that I'm a work in progress. New York is my passion. New York is the place that when I can go, I call home. You were, I, you, I remember you told me you, you lived there for like a month. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. What was it? Yeah. What was it about New York? I'm curious. What was it about New York in general that made you be like, wow? This is I, I don't know. I think, I think Madonna comes again. Madonna was crazy about New York. She kept saying New York had everything good and bad. It's your choice. As a disabled person, it's a sad way. You can either choose to be the best that you can be, or you concede yourself to be the poor one. And my parents never allowed me to play the victim card. I work since 16 years old, which is the age allowed in Brazil. I always went after the things that I wanted to have. And my parents told me, while you have the brains, we have the legs. Nice. We go as far as you go. And I met my wife in 2003. When I got married, my father came to her and said, I'm passing the baton to you. My mission is accomplished. My parents love their grandchildren because I have two boys, a teenager and a preschooler. And that's how my life is. I like English. I started a channel. I like telling people stories, incredible stories like yours that you are telling now. And mostly I am crazy about making friends. That's something that YouTube has allowed me. Everybody that I interview, we have a great connection. I end up becoming friends with everyone. And that's really nice. That's awesome, you know? man. I mean, that's a, that's such a great attitude. Like you're such a positive, yeah, a positive person. Mm -hmm. I think that's that's super valuable, not just mm -hmm. in life, but like as a teacher. I think it's so yes, it's so important. Mm -hmm. I'm also inherently positive, you know, mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I, I prioritize like good vibes and um, like I try to give people confidence and everything. But yeah, that that's great, man. That's great. And I think you have a a very special link with Brazil, if you could share. I do. My, my, my girlfriend um, mm -hmm. been together for like nine, nine and a half years or so. Wow. Um, she's, she's from Brazil, from Sao mm -hmm. Paulo. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I've always heard her speak to her family, right? They mm -hmm. speak Portuguese and English. Her dad mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. um, half, half uh, American, half um, mm -hmm. Brazilian. And her mom is from Uruguay, even though, but she lived in, in Brazil mm -hmm. for a long time. Yeah. So I hear them speak Portuguese and yeah. And at first, right, like everything, man, like everything, like every language at first, it was, mm -hmm. it was a little crazy, you know, listening to how they, how they speak, but it's similar to Spanish in some regards, you know? Yes. Um, and I just started kind of tuning my ear eventually mm -hmm. over time. And now when they speak, I just, I just fully understand, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. um, I spent, we went to, we went to Sao Paulo recently and, and I could understand what people were saying, you know, like my, I wasn't that good at like the production aspect, uh -huh. um, of it but when it came to just people asking things and people mm -hmm. talking i just i just felt like wow i just it's crazy that now i just un, like i yes. obviously haven't taken any lessons yes. or anything but i just mm -hmm. understand and it, and it goes to show yes. what exposure exposure yes. to a language what mm -hmm. that will do mm -hmm. you know um of course. And also her parents live in in portugal now and mm -hmm. the differences between portuguese portuguese yeah. and brazilian portuguese are, mm -hmm. are crazy it's yeah um, and it, it kind of makes me think um, about English learners because they'll hear American mm -hmm. people, they'll hear mm -hmm. people from the UK, mm -hmm. from Ireland, from Scotland, yeah. they'll hear people from Australia, South Africa, yeah. and it's just like such different accents, such a crazy, mm -hmm. a crazy change. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And it kind of gave me a real appreciation for, for just like those differences. Yeah. Imagine like learning 
Portuguese your whole life in Portugal, and then you go to Brazil, mm-hmm. and you're like, yeah. oh, I thought I spoke the same language, and I do, but it's just it's just very crazy. But yeah, yeah. I, I really I really loved um, yeah. my brief time in in Brazil. Yeah. But I do I do root for Brazil in, mm-hmm. in competitions mm-hmm. in, in general because I have that 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 close link. I usually say when people ask me, Brazilian Portuguese is to American English and Portuguese Portuguese is to British English, mm-hmm. you know? Uh, yeah, I, I feel the same way with, with Spanish. I'm like, yeah, yeah Portuguese from, from uh, Brazil is like my, Sp- my Peruvian yeah, Spanish. Yeah, and then you have yeah. like Spanish Spanish yeah. from here in, yeah. in Spain. Yeah, I think it's amazing. If you could see yourself five years ago, what would you tell yourself? Um, I would say trust, trust the process. And yeah. believe in discipline mm-hmm. instead of mot- like instead yeah. of inspiration. Like just believe in discipline. Yeah, you know? I, th- awesome. um, I think it's super important. Like I, I don't know what the saying is. I'm sure there's a yeah. saying, but I, I I believe that like inspiration. Yeah, and stuff is great to have an idea or mm-hmm. to carry over. You know, mm-hmm. sometimes you're laying in bed at night and you have all yeah. this inspiration, like mm-hmm. this nighttime motivation. But the, it means nothing unless you you do the yeah. discipline related stuff. Like you have to yeah. have self-discipline and that's something that um, I've learned more as time goes on. Yes. So I would say stay disciplined and, and trust the process. Of course. Now we're going to play the rapid round game, the game that everybody Ooh. loves on Let's the go. channel. My first question for you is my family is um, loving languages are beautiful. Spain is home my podcast is man so many things to say <laughs> uh, my podcast is unique friends are everything brazil portugal spain the united states um i prefer spain yes i mean that's uh, that's so i'm so biased man yeah <laughs> Like, but if we're talking about food, I'm, I might say, I might say Brazil. <laughs> Thank you. What uh, word would you pick to define yourself? Um, man, curious. I think curiosity is key. I would say curious. Yeah. yeah. Now I am on the hot seat and you can ask me Ooh. your questions. Okay. Here, I, I have a few down. Okay. Um, I wrote like two, two down. I don't have that many. Okay. Um, I have, um, mm. I was going to say three words to describe yourself. I gave you three, man. I gave you three. Okay. You gave me one. That's so much more. Okay. I am stubborn, determined, and disciplined. Nice. Those sound like three key words yeah. to do well in life, you yes. know? Um, Action movies or romantic comedies, Rod? Romantic comedies. Cool. I agree. I totally agree. Um, I have vacation, beach or mountains? Uh, mountains. Mountains. Because nice. I like a good conversation. I think that sitting around a table at a bar or somewhere else is priceless. You know, I agree. With friends agree. and family and everything. Yeah. yeah. Um, I want to say uh, one movie. If you could only watch one movie over and over, which one would it be? Forrest Gump. Forrest Gump. Dude, that's such a good answer. Because it's like a lot of different movies in one movie, almost. Yeah. You know, I always because say about the beginning Gump. of that movie is literally my story. The guy had ah. braces. And that movie is very touching, but uh, it's a wonderful movie. And it has Tom Hanks in it. So. I That's always amazing. say that um, Forrest Gump, you can you can catch it on TV like at yeah. any point of the movie, and you'll yeah. just finish it. Yeah, beginning, middle, end, where wherever it is, you'll just yeah. put it on. And be like, oh, look, he's playing ping pong, and you'll watch oh, till the end. I love That's art. Awesome. I love culture. I have another one for you. If I weren't sure. an English teacher, I would be a an English translator. <laughs> 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 keeping it in the family don't yeah, 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 yeah 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 i told you i don't see myself without english in my life you know so interesting that's interesting man i appreciate it that's yeah. good so you're so yeah. positive man it's been yeah. a it's been a pleasure to talk to you and thanks yeah. for having me um on your channel forever guest i have a sentence a quote a takeaway okay and for you is um i met you mm-hmm. and i think that we clicked 
from from the get go. Just keep being positive and spreading all the good vibes that you are, because you are an awesome person. You are beyond intelligent, smart, and you have a quality that uh, a lot of people that I've met through this YouTube journey also have, which is when we are talking to you, you look straight into our eyes. And it's an awesome quality. Remember something, and I think it's crucial in life. Nobody does anything alone. We should never, ever give up, you know, because if it was for myself, for my disability, I've, I've gone through a rough patch, a really rough patch, but I didn't give up anyway, you know? So, um, so I think that's what I have to tell you to finish nice, the then. interview. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to take that with me and I'm going to think about that because that's, mm -hmm. that's really good. That's and really one, good and, and the very last question for you, when you're coming down to Brazil to visit me. Oh, that's a, that's a good question. I mean, my next stop, next stop is, is Peru because my girlfriend yeah. has never been there. So we're going to mm. do Peru and all the, all the touristic mm -hmm. stuff like Machu Picchu and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and then whenever I can get back to Brazil, I'm dying mm -hmm. to go have some yeah. acai smoothies. Yeah. And and hopefully do some more some more of this stuff. Yes, we can meet my family, my children, my wife. We can visit my school, and I think you're gonna like my very small um, country town in the state I'm of sure. São Paulo. I'm sure. Know? So um, it was a great pleasure to talk to you. Thank you so much for the interview again. I was here with my friend Dane. All his Contacts are going to be in the description box below. It was an amazing interview. See you soon. Thank you, Dane. All right, man. Thanks for having me, man. I'll see Thank you Thank you, everybody. See you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Hello. It's Rod's friend here, Gino, from Real Everyday English. Sorry for interrupting your video. I just want to make a quick recommendation that you subscribe to Rodrigo's channel. He's an amazing guy. He's so humble. He's so dedicated. And he creates absolutely fantastic content. See you people soon. Bye-bye. God bless.